Hey guys, welcome to Mindset You Podcast. We're going to dive into understanding the definitions and, and exploration of what is masculinity, what is femi femininity. <laughs> and we're going to explore that from all the experiences that we've had in our relationships, but as men, as men going through life and figuring it out. So join us and you can always comment, like, subscribe to help us out and share this with your friends. Okay, so the idea that I have for us to talk about is from a male perspective, how does a you being in a relationship with a partner that's either outperforming you in her career, in her the financial situation, how would that impact your state? And I bring this up why because I um I know someone who who just went through a breakup because her partner felt emasculated because she was moving forward in her career. So I thought this would be a great conversation for the three of us to explore, given our history. Yeah. Well, first off, I'm going to start by saying that's a blessing in disguise. Um, if your partner feels like they're in competition with you over who's more successful, then that's not like a partnership. That's, that's, you know, I don't know. I just see it as a weird thing. I grew up where my mom was the breadwinner in the family, and, but my dad held down the fort. My dad was the one who saved all the money, you know, um, my mom's really good at spending it and, and, you know, but she's the one who made the bread. Um, so I grew up always like idolizing that. I was like, Sh I can't wait <laughs> to find a girl who's way smarter than me, <laughs> who's super business driven. And I'm like, you need me to watch the kids? <laughs> like, um, but I think it's 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 for different people because I think you know a lot of dudes grow up with that mindset that they have to be the provider and if that that makes you a man right you're a man if you're the provider and the protector and I think as we get older you kind of learn that it, you can provide in other ways it, not just a monetary thing at least in my opinion. Copy. What's your central thesis, Moses? Uh. So when it comes to this topic, I, I don't really lean towards one way. I think that probably I grew up with a specific belief that comes from a more traditional kind of hist Hispanic standpoint, uh, where it's like the man has to be the breadwinner. Uh, I think that comes from my dad. Uh, but at the same time, like my experience as an entre entrepreneur has changed that a lot from being like really broke and sleeping on the floor of my business and like pursuing something that I actually believe in. Um, I kind of understood that that money is just a tool, it's a resource and it doesn't define me as a person. Uh, so now in a relationship where, you know, my fiance uh, makes more money than I do, uh, I'm very comfortable with that. It doesn't necessarily bother me. I think the person that you know and her boyfriend is – a little bitch or her ex-boyfriend is a little bitch uh, for trying to compete with somebody that you actually care about. Yeah. I don't know. I always yeah. just feel like, you know, I get the whole provider thing, like you said, Mo, and, you know, but it also comes to the point that if you, you're, when you're in a relationship, right, and let's say, like, you guys are living together, you're, you're a team, you know. Now, regardless if, if she's the one who's making more money and that goes more towards the bills and stuff like that, then that just means you step up in other ways. You know, you just got to make it work. And I think that's the whole thing that people forget sometimes. Like you said, Mo, it's not a – like it's weird to be in competition with your spouse. You're supposed to encourage them. You want – if she's making more money, make more. Go for it. <laughs> like – and hopefully I get there too. So it's, it's it's ebbs and flows, right? You never know one day she might lose her job and now it's up to you to step up to the plate. Whoever has it at that time has it at that time. You keep it moving and you make it work the way it is. Um, so I think what, what I think what happens when you're when you think about it, like I try to think about it as why this man would believe or behave in that way. Um, and it's not even about money. It, it's not about that. Ego. It's about this like sense of insecurity that he has in relationships. So money is just a, a way to symbolize that uh, kind of this dominant whatever feeling uh, that he has. Um, so I try to empathize with, with people that are like that because, uh, it has nothing to do with that, that woman 
has nothing to do with the status. Um, and it's easy to say, like, yeah, who who cares? Like, let your girl make more money than you, you know. Uh, but you're dealing with an identity crisis exactly. in that moment. I mean, but also you have to take into account, like, I'm not saying that that the person that you know is doing this, but like, are they rubbing it in their face all the time? They're like, oh yeah, I gotta pay for this because you're a broke bitch. Like that, <laughs> I can see how that could be like that could be real hard, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that could be. Yeah, that's the opposite end of the spectrum too. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're um, doing it from this the, from the point that it's just like everything's like la 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 la. You know, I just happen to make more money, but I don't you know bring it to attention because there's some people who are like, get your weight up, and it's like, all right, dude. Right? <laughs> well, you Relax. know, I think I think that's a that's a great point, Jay, because there there's that you know what you're talking about identity, Moses, which is like the roles that that we fulfill and the roles that we expect that we're going to fulfill. Um, for me, my stance is I've been on both ends of that in terms of I've been the provider, the sole provider, and I've been, you know, the one that is trying to figure out how to just add some value financially to the household. So I think the key factor is that as as far as in my relation, my wife and I is like, we have a open communication. We talk about it. And our roles aren't set. We kind of express express them, but it comes down to to our values, right? Where that's how we measure kind of our roles. It's like, are we up living to our, our family values? Are we upholding them in any way? Because I can imagine, I can imagine like if I'm, for example, if I'm, I'm going through a depression, let's say, which I've never gone through like a, a massive shift of depression where i'm unable to well and no i'm not, i have when i lost my best friend uh my wife's best friend and, and sister to us arlene the thing there was where we were both kind of going through that at the same time but what i was going to say is that i've never been in a situation where i'm going through that and my wife is not so i would imagine that that can also feel even from like the core values, the communication that can feel as like, I'm unable to, I'm not worthy even for this relationship. And that can feel, you know, this, uh, unmasculating in that sense, demasculating is the word, um, in that sense where if it like, I'm just th- imagining like emotionally depressed, like you don't want to get out of bed. Like you're at this state where, and then, like that's kind of holding you back and you you're not contributing in any way that can be a problem again i believe that that's a problem for for me to work on and to communicate with my wife but it's still a me problem i wouldn't hold her accountable to that tell her to slow down or something so as you were talking a bunch of thoughts were were coming up in my mind um and i actually jumped on a live with like Two, like two weeks ago with a therapist, Jeffrey, and some other guy, like a life coach. And they were talking about masculinity and when it comes to, to like, what does it mean to be masculine in a relationship? And I go back down to the physiology. Like I look at all of us th- here and us being in stable relationships um, and moving into a more kind of serious and committed aspect, at least for Jay and I. Um, now, and what I've understood is like your definition of a, of, of a man is based on, a, a, at its root rudimentary level is based on your physiology. Like I'm, I'm curious to know how this guy looks like if he works out, if he like trains at all, if he identifies himself as someone that is strong physically, uh, because a lot of the times what I see with with this like ego complex that men have and especially when it comes to finance is that they don't have anything else either they may not be good in bed or they may not you know be strong physically or they may not have strong core values that they got from their father or strong significant men men figure in their lives and i think this is what allows them to build this like almost narcissistic identity from a victim standpoint that then says the only way I can be dominant in this relationship 
is by being financially secure, the financially secure one and bringing home the bread. So you're kind of saying someone that's clawing for any opportunity to be, to be worthy. Yeah. And that, that fear, that terrifying fear is going to kind of create that, that perception where, where this is their reality. Mm Mm-hmm. I think there are certain ways that you you show masculinity. Like if you were to put them into buckets, right? Like what is masculinity? To me, it's 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 being assertive. And I think men sometimes confuse assertiveness with aggressiveness. Mm. They're two very different things. Yeah. Uh, aggressiveness is like most people. It's funny because I've asked guys this before. I'm like, so how would you say this in an assertive way? And they'd be like insulting the person or getting angry or yelling. And I'm like, that's not assertive. That's aggressive. Right. Assertive is, is it requires vulnerability to, to a certain aspect where you're really saying what you feel and what you think with a clear boundary in line. And most men confuse that with aggressiveness. And they think that setting a boundary is, is showing violence or showing anger or or showing dominance in some way where you kind of put somebody else down and it's not it's not like that hey guys if you're enjoying this podcast please subscribe like below comment let us know your thoughts and continue to enjoy you know as you were talking about that i thought about like i'm just thinking about what situations in life can can put me in that space right Um, because like what you said about masculinity is like, yeah, I could see that. But even in my relationship, like that's, that, that's ebbs and flow. Like Jay said, because there's, there's certain things where my, my wife is, is kind of the, the one that that holds the line on. There's other things where I hold the line on. And so for example, the, the physical concept that you talk about, like for me, yes, that's always been my my wheelhouse, right? Uh, I see myself as as a physical protector in that sense. But I thought about, okay, what would take that away? Let's say, you know, I get a disease where I'm unable to use my body anymore and I'm no longer a physical dominant or or accident, whatever it is, something that takes that that identity away, then would I then go into that like desperation grasp right? So it can't be defined by one thing. Otherwise, that's basically your fragility. Yeah, that's how fragile you are to lose your sense of self and worth. So I think there's, there's a, there's like a nuance to it that that has to adapt to, to the situation. Um, Because in, in my relationship, there's, there's been moments where like Jay said with, with his parents, there's been moments where I'm the one controlling the money and, and all of that and deciding what we're going to save for. There's been other times where that shifts entirely. So it's, it's never this like clear, okay, this is my role. This is your role. But yet there are things that, that start to fall into their, their places until something changes, you know, like she gets really busy at work. Now I'm going to have to step up or vice versa. Like there's all this, this variable. Does that make sense? No, it makes complete sense. Um, so it's like, how yeah, do you define it, it under like one definition? Yeah, I think it goes back to what we always say. Like, it's all a gray area, right? Like, it's it's um, it's never black and white. And I think it's just, it, I think it's really situational. You know, there are certain times, like you said, where where you, you know, where you hold the line on certain things. And there's other times where, where Paolo holds the line on certain things. And it just comes down to like your personality and your strong suits. You know, like the conversation we had the other week where you're like, when the babies were first born, you were super calm, right? And Paolo was like, how are you so calm? That's part of, you know, that's part of how we thought about masculinity, right? Where it's like you had to be the the, the, sto- the stoic one almost in certain instances that you can't be reactive all the time. But then there's also times where you need that person to kind of, you know, draw the line sometimes when it's like, okay, you're being too calm. No, it's like this. And it's, it just, um. It's really situational. Like even growing up, like I wasn't necessarily scared of my dad. I was scared of my mom. And if you think about that, that's like a masculine thing. Like it's always like, wait till your father gets home. And for my house, it was wait till your mother gets home. Like, can't you hit me before she gets here? And we never talk about this again, (laughs) you know? 
so uh, it's it's really situational um i just i i hope that dude figures figures himself out um you know it's, it's easy to call him a bitch and make fun of him and be like ah ha ha you little pussy and stuff like that um and I'm, I'm gonna do that anyway but at the same time i do hope that he finds himself and I, I i do hope going down the line that he realizes that that it's not a competition and he finds like the root of why that bothers him so much or why it was such a a, a situation that it had to end a relationship that co- possibly could have been a, one of the best relationships of his life mm-hmm. you know but that's just speculating yep. i just think you know but you know what i mean like it's like you, you let something like that get in the way of a good relationship like that's Silly, did I just freeze? Yeah, 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 your voice is there, but you're you're frozen. Yeah. Mo, you were gonna add something? I was gonna say, I think I think what happens is people get confused with masculinity and femininity. Uh there we go. It, it it I think those two words aren't necessarily defined by gender. And I think that's what, what gets confusing. It's just like, oh, if you're masculine, then you're a man. Uh, and if you're feminine, then you're a woman. It's a it's a feminine characteristic. And that's important in order to be assertive and masculine and stay. It's like with Joe Rogan. I think there was a, a podcast with Joe Rogan on it uh, and Joe Rogan's one. And there's a guy that is, it's better to be uh, a warrior in a garden than it is to be a gardener in, in a war. war. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you first have to become and this is something that i personally went through is like i confused aggressiveness with assertiveness and believe that was masculine but in reality you need to learn what anger is to be able to control it and be empathetic and then from there is when you get to be that gardener person that more stoic individual that understands why people do the things they do um and it allows you to be a better father a better husband Mm -hmm. you know a better brother a better friend uh it's those things that that actually, it requires both sides. And I think it's not uh, based or, or boiled down to gender. I think I that's agree. what most people use, yeah. yeah no, I, I um, agree. I, a couple of weeks ago, I, re- I read this book, uh, Dance with Anger. And it's interesting because the book is is directed to women. So it's like a women's guide to managing anger or something like that. But what was super interesting about it is that it really talked about the the dynamics of relationships, whether it's in 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 work at work or in a, a personal marriage, different types of relationship, and that balance that happens, like everything is always trying to balance itself out. So it talked about and and it broke it down from a psychological level, where if you have a relationship where you know the wife is super naggy and the, and the husband really shuts down like that's an attempt to create balance right because and in order to to change that pattern you got to become self-aware both of you self-aware and start changing the way you react in those situations and then what happens is so if the husband for example is is shuts down and and doesn't respond the wife, by being hyper reactive, is keeping that balance. If she pulls back from that, then the husband has room to bring it up and bring it back into balance from his end and becomes more expressive and everything and vice versa. So it's this interesting dynamic of it all where it's highlighting that going to Moses' point of there is no direct feminine masculine thing. It's more, you know, cliche social construct. But I think it's a it's a relationship balance in which we're able to to connect and express, and behind all of that is learn ourselves, because when we learn ourselves, we're able to to express honestly and 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 hold our own line. But if there's a block from learning ourselves because of and that block could come from our our expectation, what rules are, what roles are, how are we supposed to act because we're male or female then that becomes the block and we have to live within this line otherwise we believe we're wrong and that limits us no i think that makes complete sense i just i just sorry i just realized the cat's in the room i always get shocked when she's up there i, no, I, saw it's, it's, I was like what is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that um <laughs> 
No, yeah, I, I just, I just wish people would stop putting this whole thing like how we were just saying. Like, it's not, it's not a gender thing. It's a, it's a, it's a human thing. It's, it's just be a better person, especially when you're in a relationship, when you, whether it's a relationship or with your father. It's like you just gotta show up and try to be the best person that you could possibly fucking be. And whether that means that you have to take a back seat sometimes in the monetary field, or if you have to take a back seat in making decisions sometimes, because maybe you're not the best, assert- maybe you're not the most assertive person. You got to find your balance, and I think being open with your partner is 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 the way you succeed. So you know what's interesting as you were talking, Jay, and thinking about this word assertiveness and like how it gets, and even now my, it's kind of changed for me, the definition already. Just now? This, yeah. Just in the 30 minutes, I was like, oh, assertiveness is something that as, like kind of correlates with masculinity. And now I'm like, no, it's just vulnerability. Yeah. At, at its root, it's just vulnerability. Like when you're assertive, you're, you're being honest and mm-hmm. you're being transparent and you're just expressing something when it's very difficult. Yeah. Uh, I think that's part of, of being assertive is like, to be assertive requires a sense of courage. Uh, yeah, it's a matter of speaking up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So then it's like, no, it's not masculine or at all or feminine at all. It's, it's, it's actually like if you're taking that yin yang is that line in the middle. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, that's important to, to kind of understand. Like, and I, I, I know that because it was really hard to understand what assertive actually means. Uh, and, and I didn't get it until I learned what vulnerability means and like how to really step into that or lean into that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so the reality is, is that guy, he's not vulnerable. And he's not being honest with what's actually happening in his mind. And he just tries mm-hmm. to navigate it with his behaviors to show dominance. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, as you said that the the vulnerability, I'm like, yeah, that's and that vulnerability again, going back to what we've talked about many times, is that vulnerability is first and foremost with self, right? That being vulnerable with yourself and 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 being courageous in exploring these doubts, these insecurities within yourself, and then once you do that, now you can be step two vulnerable with others, where now you can express this, you can have now work on the courage. But like, if you don't start that first step of being vulnerable yourself, you don't even know why these reactions, there's no self-awareness of why these things, you just take them as this is doctrine, this is how it's supposed to be. And that curiosity allows you to really start to understand the self and then create that, that overall understanding in a, in a partnership. And then you can hold boundaries and it takes time you know i think sometimes people think like there's like an overnight remedy of like they're gonna change right off the bat and it's like you it's constant work it's um you have to you have to put in the hours you know um it doesn't come easy nothing comes easy if it was easy then everybody would be married and everybody would be in the perfect relationship or you know perfect financial like situation like it you have to you have to put in the time and um, hopefully he finds it sooner or later if not he can stay a little bitch for the rest of his life (laughs) time to go take some uh, martial art classes so yeah guys uh does anybody want to give their final thoughts like it's jerry springer (laughs) <laughs> I totally forgot about that show. Okay. Yeah, the final thoughts. Uh I would say that um it comes back down to the two ingredients that we Rancis and I always talk about Vita Project in order to to have a successful relationship and really understand understand what masculinity means to you as a man. Uh it requires awareness and vulnerability. Without those two ingredients yeah, it's just not going to happen. You'll be a little bitch for the rest of your life. And I'll take it a step further. It's not even about being like how he said, like it's not a gender thing. It's just as a person, you know, you have to be man or female you, or however you choose to describe yourself. You, you have to, you, you have to hold yourself accountable and be self-aware and, and, and truly try to understand why you react to certain things the way that you do. I mean, it's um, perfect that you said that with the rainbow on your hat. 
All right. Well, it just says New Jersey is, is a superior place as I decide that I'm going to leave this fucking state eventually. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I wanted to, to add to, to what you both said, which is like the the masculinity thing. Like if you can be demasculated, that means that it doesn't belong to you. So first identify and understand, define what is what yeah. is your masculine energy that you're that's being taken away from you. Yeah. And secondly, if it can be taken away from you so easily, it never was something you had. So literally blocking someone's growth because you don't have a definition for yourself. It's the opposite of masculine. Yeah. Is she pegging you on the money that the more money that she makes? Like, like if that's the only way I can think of. Maybe you're being demasculated, where you're the power bottom in this situation, and there's no way of getting out of it. But even then, I think that that is the bravest thing you can do. Take in the butt. It's that's. <laughs> Jay always Sorry. has to take it somewhere there. Listen, I had to. Um, on that note, guys, don't forget <laughs> to like, subscribe, comment. You can find us anywhere, whether it's YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, uh, VitaProject.com. Um, do you guys have any other news or anything that you like to get off about the website or business or anything like that? We're still working on the the journal that's going to be coming soon. Nice. Um but yeah, anything that you can check us out on, on Instagram and message us or comment yeah. below this video and let us know what are your thoughts on this subject because yeah. I think this is a touchy subject that maybe, I think maybe so you're too. going through. And just for the record, if you are a power bottom, I love you anyway. I respect the shit out of you. It's, you're a better person than I am. And um, that's it. Peace, guys. <laughs>